there ever was a pistol that needed to be made, it's right here. An easy to rack, easy to use, 22 semi-auto subcompact. If there ever was a topic that pleaded to be dealt with, it's here. When do we get an alternative to the now antiquated selection? The answer is here, right here, right now. This is the Ruger LCP-2 chambered in 22 long rifle. 22% of Americans have weak or weakened hand strength. Limitations such as arthritis, carpal tunnel, repetitive strain injury to the hands, issues with the cardiovascular system, chemotherapy, and the list goes on and on, can cause a wide variety of symptoms that can affect your ability to manage certain handguns. In the world of firearms, this lack of strength equates to recoil sensitivity, but recoil management is not the only reason to consider such a 22. The ease of which this Ruger can be operated should not be underestimated. The manual safety has an intuitive push forward to fire orientation for your right thumb with a nice audible and tactile click, although I would advise using your left hand's index finger to return to safe. Attempting to use my right thumb to return to safe is cumbersome and somewhat awkward. To be clear, most of the time I do get it back to the safe position using my thumb, but most of the time it's not good enough. It must be a 100% transition. Using two hands works. Using two hands is safe. Also train your left hand where it needs to be. Personally, I retract all of my fingers, then place my thumb on the rear of the slide before using my index finger. If we remember Newton's first law as, an object in motion wants to stay in motion, then, if the pistol is dropped, the pistol and the mass of the trigger itself wants to continue doing what it was doing, that is, traveling down towards the center of the earth. The trigger safety is to aid in preventing the pistol from discharging or firing itself if dropped. This blade, if you will, must be physically pressed back before the trigger can be actuated. This pistol is equipped with a magazine safety, also known as a magazine disconnect. When the magazine is removed, or even partially removed, the pistol cannot fire. Whether there is a cartridge in the chamber or not, the trigger is not able to be pulled after removal of the magazine. In essence, the firearm is now disabled until a magazine is reinserted. In a few minutes, I will discuss in detail my thoughts about these safeties and this pistol as a whole, but keep in mind that all safeties on a firearm can break or fail. They are mechanical devices made by people with inherent unique flaws, made with machinery with potential flaws. A safety is no replacement for handling a firearm in a safe and educated manner. The alloy steel slide has integral sights, caulking serrations both front and rear with the addition of caulking wings at the rear of the slide. The sights are not adjustable or removable. Low profile, snag free, black on black, with anti glare serrations cut horizontally. The frame of the pistol, made from glass filled nylon, has ample texturing on the grip area that I have come to appreciate given the small size of this pistol. I find it not only to offer aid in solid retention, but aesthetically pleasing as well. Also, serrations on the front of the trigger guard for those of you that place your offhand's index finger on the guard. The slide lock and magazine release are both made from metal. The slide lock does work as a slide release, and the magazine release is reachable for myself without breaking my firing grip. Rolling away my pinky and ring finger will ensure a fluid removal, and the ejection of the magazine is extremely positive. Undoubtedly a disappointment for some that none of the controls are on the right side of the pistol. In the owner's manual, it states that it is safe to dry fire this pistol. It is a hammer-fired, single-action only design with a non-exposed hammer. The trigger is made from plastic and there is an over-travel stop molded into the trigger guard. The trigger pull is predictable and consistent. Initial take-up is somewhat long but met without resistance. Then a bit of firm stacking to find the wall. Then a clean break. The trigger reset is clearly heard and felt. The reset takes up 90% of the weightless take up, putting you right back to the stacking. The blue steel magazine holds 10 rounds of 22 long rifle. That's 10 plus 1 if you top off the magazine after loading a round into the chamber. 11 rounds of 22 is not a trivial number for such a small pistol. 
you'll notice on the magazine that there are no exposed tabs or screws to assist in releasing tension within the mag itself. In turn, these magazines are very difficult, if not a nightmare to load without this mag loader that is provided with the pistol. Push the loader down on the magazine follower, push in a cartridge, lift up the loader, push in the same cartridge to the rear, and repeat. Without the magazine inserted, I get about one third of my ring finger on the grip. The extended base plate awards my entire finger on the grip and aids in the 10 round capacity. Take note that I purchased two additional magazines when I bought this pistol in January of 2020. In the box was only one magazine. I have fired 700 rounds of CCI Mini Mag, 40 grain round nose so far with three failures to fire. Also the very first round I attempted a chamber led to a failure to go into battery. I have had no double feeds, no failures to extract, no stove pipes, and the last round hold open has worked every time. So far, so good. Beyond this small sample size of ammunition and a relatively short window of analysis, I find this Ruger to be very reliable for what it is. I say that because it is a semi-auto pistol chambered in 22 long rifle. Simply put, a 22 will eventually fail to fire. Given enough time, every round on demand will have a failure to fire as well, but the 22 will fail more often. Or should I say, a rimfire cartridge will fail more often than a centerfire cartridge. My main concern is how the pistol deals with a failure. I expect to be able to clear the malfunction without being met with a growing problem such as a failure to eject leading to a double feed, leading to magazine removal, and so on. This pistol has not had any double feeds, nor have I had any jams by clearing the malfunction I have experienced. This pistol works. This pistol is a 22. Let us all understand what we are getting into with such a thing. And the failure to go into battery on my first round has not happened again. A little bit of growing pains, I am sure. Proper cleaning and lubrication of this pistol is paramount for a problem-free experience. A small screwdriver or similar tool will remove the takedown pin, then the slide is free to be removed. Compress the recoil spring slightly and then pull it up. Take note that the guide rod and recoil spring are not captive. To remove the barrel, slightly press it forward and then up. The recoil spring, guide rod, and takedown pin are made from metal and the barrel is made from stainless steel. Clean this pistol often and clean it well. Among all the cleaning supplies that you may use, I find a flashlight and a can of air to be invaluable. Lubricate friction areas accordingly, but remember a little lubrication goes a long way. You'll have to excuse this parlor trick if you will, but it does illustrate just how easy the slide is to operate. And then we have the caulking wings to make an already easy thing easier. Although I have noticed while using a pinch style of racking I can feel the presence of the manual safety on the side of my left hand's index finger. It does not pinch or hurt in any way. But this begs the question, can a user induce an accidental movement of the safety while racking the slide? If I try, yes, I can return the safety to safe while racking this way, but I really have to try and make this happen. I've never had this happen on accident, but everyone has different fingers. Food for thought. Also after the hammer has been dropped by pulling the trigger, such as dry fire practice, the safety cannot return to safe without first recocking the hammer by racking the slide. With a self-defense pistol such as this, I do not like a manual safety or a magazine disconnect. 
and some I believe it overcomplicates and adds a possible user error to what would be a very stressful situation if, God forbid, you ever had to use it in self-defense. But with this pistol, I will forego my normal stickman scenario complaints, as I think the majority of whom buys this will want these safeties. You may foresee this pistol as a trainer or a stepping stone to its predecessor chambered in 380 ACP, or you may want it for a range toy or just because you can. Maybe it is to be a backup gun or a force multiplier. In my opinion, where this pistol shines is to those who need such a concealable option that is of low recoil and easy to manage. A pistol of exactly this size, a pistol that can go from your nightstand to your pocket. For a person that has limitations, there are many different options for home defense besides this, and yes, some of these options would be better, but how many of these options can this person take with them and conceal outside of the house? This is a gun that does not thrash you with sensory overload, and that does not break the wallet. A thing that you can actually train with and become familiar. A pistol you can call yours. At the end of the day, this pistol is confidence.